Hello and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. I'm Peter and today I'm going to be playing through Marvel Champions. That's right, it's a release day, brand new hero. Archangel's out. This is a three-sided hero, so similar to Ant-Man and Wasp. You have Warren Worthington the third on one side. You have Angel on the other side. And then if you open the card up, then you will get the Archangel hero as well. One of the interesting things is they both have hand size of five, but on the Archangel side, you're going to get an acceleration. So you're going to have to do extra acceleration for being on this side. And this side's kind of the attacking side. This side over here is more the thwarting side. As you can see, they have responses after you play an aerial event as archangel deal damage to an enemy equal to that event's printed cost so you will do extra damage for playing aerial events and let me tell you his deck is very full of aerial events on angel side after you play an aerial event draw a card limit once per phase so you can change between any of these hero sides or change to alter ego just once per turn similar to other things now you will notice we are playing digitally and that is because i think it is much easier to see the cards i can zoom in on them for you i do have a copy of this in fact fantasy flight sent it to me the only reason we're doing it digitally is because it makes it a lot easier for me to see everything and i think for everybody else to see everything while i'm playing as well especially when it's a new hero when you want to see all the new cards all right, so I will be going up against Green Goblin. I did want to go up against an aerial opponent, um, and I know Goblin doesn't start off as aerial, but he definitely has a glider to help make him aerial, so uh, that, that was the best I could come up with for an aerial villain. All right, well, let's go ahead and draw up our six cards and see what we can do. So we have Ever Vigilant. Play only if you have the aerial trait. Ready your hero and remove two threat from the main scheme. We've got Siren. Response after Siren attacks. Stun a minion. 2-2. Two, two. Stun a minion, though. Uh, we got Razor Dive. Deal 6 damage to an enemy. If you are Archangel, this attack gains overkill and piercing. Seems good. Adaptive Plumage, which lets you thwart if you're an angel, remove 3 threat from a scheme, and confuse an enemy. Or, if you are an Archangel, it lets you deal 4 damage to an enemy and stun it. Now, the problem is we got this Garter here, so being able to stun would only let me stun the Goblin here. Even if I went to Archangel form, that wouldn't work out because it's after you play an aerial event, you deal damage to an enemy. So that three extra damage there, not going to help us with stunning Goblin, unless I can find a way to get rid of the Thrall, which again, Razor Dive seems to be that way. We got Elixir here. Play only if you have the X-Force or X-Men trait. Response after Elixir attacks and thwarts. Heal one damage from another friendly character. Free healing's always good. Ooh, Avion Anatomy. After you spend this card to pay for an aerial event, return the event to your hand after resolving its effects. That is super good. All right, I'm going to hold on to that because I do have an aerial event. I plan on playing this turn, but let's get rid of everything else except for Razor Dive, which is going to let us do six damage with Overkill and Piercing. And let's go ahead and draw up and hopefully get some double resources. Ooh, we got Psylocke. After Psylocke attacks, if you are... Angel, heal one damage from Psylocke, or Archangel, ready your hero. Both of those things, really good, by the way. Taunt, the villain attacks you. Other characters cannot defend against this attack, but then you get to draw three cards. It's kind of nice. That might help me get out both Psylocke and Razor Dive. That seems real good. All right, uh, Contaminate Strategy, attached to a non-permanent side scheme. Max one per side scheme response. After a hero defends against an attack, remove one threat from the attached scheme. So that's going to help protection really get rid of side schemes, which was something protection had issues with. So you also have aerial intervention. When a character would take any amount of damage from an attack, exhaust an aerial character you control to prevent up to three of that damage. So that would be really good if you had a second aerial character out. On Archangel's side, you have three defense. I guess if you were using Angel, you'd have to pay a card to get one more defense. Might be worth it, but in this situation, I think it's really better if you have a second aerial character to really help prevent that damage. But I do have a plan for this turn, so I'm going to go ahead and change to my Archangel form. And then I'm going to go ahead and play Taunt. The villain attacks you. Other characters cannot defend against this attack, but then you get to draw three cards. So I'm spending two to draw three. I don't know if it's worth it, but I really want some double resources because I'd love to get out both Psylocke and Razor Dive this turn. We'll, we'll see what happens here. So the enemy is going to attack me. After Green Goblin attacks and damages you, place one threat on the main scheme. He's attacking for two. I am going to defend. 
and two plus zero is zero, so we don't have to place threat on the main scheme. That makes me happy. But now you get to draw three cards. Warpath starts with toughness. After Warpath defends against an attack, play an event with a hero action ability. So I could play aerial attack in the middle of a defense. So after Warpath defends against an attack and starts it out tough. Seems good. You got aerial agility. It's a defensive event. When you're an angel, ignore boost icons. When you're archangel, give yourself tough and retaliate one. Pretty darn good. You also have natural fight here. Remove four threat from a scheme. If you're an angel, the sword ignores the crisis icon. Unfortunately, none of this is really what I need so do I play Psylocke and ready myself? I think I'm just going to play Razor Dive. Although if I play Warpath, I'll have a Defender and I'll be able to play Razor Dive off turn. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and play with Warpath here. So we're going to pay one, two, three, four to put Warpath in. And I'm going to hold on to Razor Dive and Avion Anatomy because I wanted to get Razor Dive back in my hand. We'll see if it's worth it. I don't know. I'm I'm doubting myself here, but let's go ahead and do it anyway and see what happens. So I do have a five card hand size here. Let's go ahead and draw up. Oh, Worthington Industries. We'll talk about all these cards that I have here. I guess the one I, I will point out now because it'll come in handy on the enemy turn is Power of Flight, which doubles the number of resources when paying for an aerial card. And as you've seen so far, we have quite a few aerial cards. We're going to go over the other two Worthington Industries and Soaring Acrobatics in a minute because they're both really good as well. First things first, we normally would accelerate one, but we have to accelerate two because I'm on my Archangel side. And then Goblin is going to attack. We are going to defend with Warpath over here, who's tough. Goblin gets a boost card, so attacks for a total of three, which gets rid of tough. We don't have to place a threat because there was no damage dealt, but we are going to use this hero response. After Warpath defends against an attack, play an event with a hero action ability. We're going to do that right now. So this is a hero action razor dive, deal six damage to an enemy. If you're Archangel, this attack gains overkill and piercing. We're going to play Power of Flight, which gives us two resources toward an aerial car, and then Avion Anatomy, which as you remember, will let me return that card to my hand after I play it. So I'm gonna play this, but then it comes right back into my hand. So that was a total of three resources. Pay for Razor Dive, six damage. If you're Archangel, this attack gains overkill and piercing. So three is gonna go here to this Goblin Thrall, and then three more to Goblin himself as well as response after your hero plays an aerial event, deal damage to an enemy equal to the event's printed cost limited once per phase. So I could do it both on my hero phase and on the enemy phase. So let's go ahead and take our encounter card and see what we get. When revealed, the villain heals X damage where X is equal to double the villain stage number. So that's gonna be one, two damage. If nothing was healed, the card gains surge, but something was healed. All right, so we have this card. When an aerial character you control uses a basic power, exhaust soaring acrobatics, that card gains plus one to that power for this use. We also have this here, exhaust Worthington Industries to shuffle an aerial card from your discard pile into your deck. And if you're an alter ego, you also get to draw a card. I kind of want both of those things out right now. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get both of them. Worthington Industries, only one of in my deck, though, and I know Soaring Acrobatics has three, so I'm going to go ahead and use Soaring Acrobatics to pay for Worthington Industries, which will let me exhaust to shuffle an aerial card from my discard back into my deck. I got an aerial thwart here, which might be the one. Aerial agility, which lets me have defense, which also seems good. Or Adaptive Plumage, which is also good. Stun or Confuse. You know what? I'm putting Adaptive Plumage in. As good as Defense is, as good as Thwarting is, a card that lets me Confuse or Stun seems better right now. And if I was Alter Ego, I would have been able to draw a card right there. I am not, but I am going to switch to Angel Form from Archangel, which will allow me to Thwart. And I'm going to Thwart for two. One, two on the main scheme. Because... I don't want another two acceleration. That would have put it at six and just really close. But that is the end of the hero turn. I'm going to ready up and draw up. And again, we will go through this. I'm just making sure I don't have any defensive cards here. No, but I do have Avian Anatomy. I do have a double resource and Adaptive Plumage and Razor Dive, all of which can be played because of Warpath over here. They can be played during the villain phase. So we'll see if that's what we decide to do or not. 
I'm thinking no right now. I don't necessarily want to lose Warpath at this point. So I might either defend myself or we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, but first things first, we're going to add a threat to the main scheme. It's going to attack me for two. This says when he attacks and damages you. That means here. So Warpath defending would actually save me from having to add an extra threat there. So I'll go ahead and defend. Hopefully it's not a two boost. It is. It is my obligation, which is an interesting one. So I'm going to go over it because we might not see it again. One revealed, if you're in Archangel form, place two threat on the main scheme. Otherwise, change to Archangel form. Alter Ego action, deal the first player an encounter card to discard this. So you got to go to Alter Ego and to get rid of it. But it's going to give you plus one encounter card draw every turn until you get rid of it. So... One way or another, you're getting at least one extra card draw out of that thing. And if you're an Archangel, you'd also be adding threat to the main scheme. But unfortunately, that is a boost of two, which is going to do four damage and defeat Warpath. So you don't get to do this hero response, I don't think. Not that I wanted to anyway, but if it's defeated, I don't think you get to do it. But no extra threat was added. We are going to flip one more. Pumpkin Bombs attached to the villain. After the villain attacks you, discard Pumpkin Bombs to take two indirect damage. You can spend two fists to get rid of it. I have 12 health. I don't think I'm going to worry about getting rid of it. But let's go ahead and come back to our turn. Ever Vigilant, ready your hero and remove two threat from the main scheme. Seems pretty good for a cost of two. So I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to use Power of Flight over here, which is two for an aerial vent, and this is one. Well... First things first, I guess I should have, I should do something. So I'm going to thwart for two. One, two, to get rid of that. Then I'm going to pay Ever Vigilant. Play only if you have the aerial trait. Ready your hero and remove two threat from the main scheme. Let's go ahead and ready our hero, remove from the main scheme. But the other thing is I get to do this. After your hero plays an aerial event, draw a card. Limit once per phase. I'm going to do that, and now I'm going to go to Archangel. So I'm readied as Archangel now. And let's see, we got natural flight here, remove four threat, don't need to do that. We got this, which if you're in Archangel form, deal four damage to an enemy and stun it. Seems real good. We have Razor Dive, which will do six, it's two more damage, but then you lose the stun. We also have Angel's Airy here, which is a protection card that's not an angel card. Response, after you defend against an attack, place one fatigue counter here. On Alter Ego, remove fatigue counter from here to heal a damage from your identity for each fatigue counter remove this way so that seems good for every time you defend you're building up to be able to heal later on but let's go ahead we know we want to play adaptive plumage this turn i don't need to spend all of this so i'm going to spend angel's area here i'm going to spend natural flight and i'm going to spend avian anatomy so i'm going to do adaptive plumage which will let me attack for four and stun the enemy and boom comes right back to my hand so one, two, three, four, and stunned, which seems good. I like stunning. So we do have both of these cards in our hand. I'm not going to be able to use either of them, but I am going to use Worthington Industries to shuffle something back into my deck. The nice part about this Worthington Industries is that it keeps you from decking as well as putting cards back in. You know, this aerial defense might be nice. I'm going to put the defense one in this time, but... I definitely, that natural flight is going to be one that's going to be going back in the deck at some point. Let's go ahead and shuffle back up. I still haven't used my two attack yet, so I will go ahead and do that to knock Goblin down two more. And that is going to end my turn. I'm going to go ahead and ready up. I'm going to keep both of these cards in my hand, even though the odds of me being able to play both are extremely low. But I want to be situationally be able to figure out what I want to play next turn. All right, so I went ahead and drew up to my hand size of five. Now we're going to add one acceleration, plus because I'm in Archangel, we're going to add a second one. Goblin is stunned, so no attack ever ends up happening, and we'll take our encounter card. When revealed, choose to either spend two resources of any type or give the villain a face-down boost card. If I spend two, then I won't be able Well, what's this? Metamorphosis. Change form. Then, if you go to Warren Worthington, draw a card, Angel, remove two threat, or Archangel, deal three damage. I'm not going to be able to pay for everything, but the problem is, if I spend two resources, then I won't be able to pay for anything except Metamorphosis, which might not be the worst thing in the world. So you know what? Instead of giving him a face-down boost card, I am. I'm going to pay one, which was mental, and then, I don't know, Adaptive Plumage will let me stun, though. Ah, two. We're doing it to get rid of this. Back to our turn. I'm going to take Worthington Industries and shuffle Adaptive Plumage right back into my deck. And then I am going to switch to Angel Form, Thwart for two, to get rid of the threat on the main scheme. 
And then I'm going to pay for Metamorphosis, which is an aerial card. So one, two, pay for Metamorphosis. Action, change form. Then, so I'm going to change to Archangel. And I think it's because here it says after you play an arrow, I think it's after it resolves. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Archangel, deal three damage to an enemy. One, two, three. And now, because I am an Archangel, I get to do one, two more. And then I have still not finished my activation. So the question is, do I do two more damage and defeat Goblin here? There's not really anything else I can do here, but defeating Goblin puts the next Goblin out. But you know what? Why not? Let's do it. We're going to attack to defeat this Goblin, move it away, and go on to the next one, which gives us two encounter cards, also 18 life. So hopefully we survive this. Because, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's two more encounter cards that I want to see, honestly. All right, let's go ahead and ready up, and we will draw back to our hand size of five. We are going to add one here, plus one, because we are in Archangel form. So that's two. And then Goblin is going to attack us. Do I have any defensive events? Soaring Hearts, which is our team-up card with Psylocke. We can go over that in a minute. Oh, Techno Organic Wings is awesome upgrade that you get. Exhaust it. If you are in Angel form, you can ready your hero. If you're in Archangel form, reduce the cost of your next aerial event you play from your hand by two, which is amazing, which would have been nice earlier. And we got two of these Soaring Acrobatics. If you're an aerial character, you get plus one to whatever power you use. So attack, defense, or thwart. You can only have one of them in play, but pretty good and aerial intervention when a character would take any amount of damage from an attack exhaust an aerial character to prevent three of that again that's great if you have a second aerial character not so great when you're by yourself so i got no defensive cards and honestly no real cards of much use to me next turn i mean obviously techno organic wings are always great but not really going to help me on this next turn but now we have to deal with the goblin attack so goblin's going to attack for two I'm going to go ahead and defend for three. We're going to flip a card, put Goblin Thrall into play, engage with you. So that's going to happen. Let's move these two cards over here. Goblin Thrall is then going to attack me, but first we got to resolve the Pumpkin Bombs. So I did defend against all that damage. So after Green Goblin attacks and damages you, but he didn't attack and damage me, discard Pumpkin Bombs to take two indirect damage. So I will take that two damage. And then this Thrall is going to attack me, so that's one more damage. Then we're going to have to add another encounter card for three and hope to survive this because this is not pretty. So this is overrun when defeated in player order. Each player must discard two cards from the encounter deck and put each goblin minion discarded this way into play. Engage with them. It's got two acceleration. It's only one per player. So it's only going to have one threat on it. Let's see what the next one is. The villain attacks you. Well, that's not great. So that's going to be attack for two. I'm already exhausted, so let's see what I get. Boost. Put Goblin Soldier into play. Engage with you. Yay. So that's more. Two damage. And then, because damage was done to me by the attack, we're going to add one to the main scheme. One revealed. The villain and each minion engage with you attacks you. Well, this might be the end. Uh, so that's two. Plus one is three. One, two, three. Then we have to add another threat to the main scheme. That didn't end well and then goblin thrall is going to attack me for one and then goblin soldier is going to attack me for one so two more damage and i had defended already so yeah that was that just happened we'll just we'll just leave it at that just happened we also got this which is going to add two acceleration so we are definitely losing the main scheme next turn i think i'm gonna have to flip down though and hope for the best here so when you flip down you stay in the same orientation you were so i was exhausted so i'm going to come in exhausted as an action i can heal one damage from warren worthington i'm going to get these techno wings in because they are going to allow me to do some additional damage next turn before i do that i'm actually going to use my worthington industries to shuffle an aerial card from my discard into my deck I'm going for the damage with overkill, which is razor dive, shuffle it in, and I do get to draw a card right now. So come on, double resource. And look at that. Double the number of resources this card generates when playing for an aerial card. That's a skill. That's a superpower tech. Neither of those are aerial cards. You know, you know. If you know, you know. 
This is an arrow card that costs zero. Not much help there. All right, I'm gonna pay one, two, three to put in Techno Organic Wings. Again, amazing card. Hero action, you get to exhaust it. If you're an angel, you get to ready yourself. If you're an archangel, you get to reduce the cost of your next aerial card by two. So now it's the end of my turn. I'm gonna have to decide what to do. Aerial Acrobatics is good, but I'd rather keep the double resource and really hope for a massive damage turn next turn. And maybe even defeating the villain because I'm in a lot of trouble here. And so we'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and ready up. And I drew up to my six cards and I'm gonna to need to heal as well, but we'll see, that doesn't seem likely. So we're gonna do one plus two more. We're gonna add three, one, two, three. And that's before the villain even activates. And so that gets it to its threshold of seven. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. Oh, when completed in player order, each player not engaged with a goblin minion must discard three cards from the deck and put a goblin into play. Well, guess what? We're definitely engaged with a goblin, in fact, Two of them. Uh, one revealed advanced to B. So it's going to start with four on it with a max out of 11. But it's going to go up by X each turn where X equals the number of goblin enemies in play, including green goblins. So we got one, two, three. It's going to go three a turn, four, five if we include this. So yeah, there's that. Now, Goblin is going to scheme as well because we haven't done Goblin schemes. Goblin scheming for three. One, two, three. Now we've got both of these. The Soldier and the Thrall are both going to add one more. Yeah, we're in trouble. We're pretty close to losing here. Goblin's still got 18 life left. I've got some things to do some damage, but yeah, we'll see if we can live through this. And that's without taking our encounter card, so let's see what that is. Uh, all right, it's a Goblin Soldier. So another damager for me. And by the way, I'm at three life, nine threat on the main scheme. We got 18 left to go. Double acceleration. We only need to get to 11 to lose. Let's let's figure out if we can do something here. All right, we're going to heal for one first. So I can thwart quite a bit, but if I do that, so I can thwart for two and then use this to ready myself to thwart for another two. So that would be four off of the main scheme, but we're going to add one, two, three, four, five, six, which would lose us the game anyway, just when we flip over. Now I could ever vigilant to draw some cards, but that means I'm sitting at four life also, which isn't great. Let's see what cannonball does. When cannonball would take any amount of consequential damage, reduce the amount by X, where X is the number of aerial cards in your hand. Now I do have two aerial cards in my hand. So that's pretty good so instead of taking two consequential damage you take zero cost three to put out though i could play adaptive plumage and razor dive this turn which seems real good it's not going to be enough to kill everything though taunt doesn't seem good because i'm sitting at four life well you know what i'm just gonna go for it and see what happens so i'm switching to archangel form we'll just see how much damage we can do this turn oh oh Actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and use Warrington Industries. That way I get to draw a card. Let's use our thwarting card. Or do we do another damage card? I don't even know if I can afford it. So it's one, two, and this does two. So I'm going to have to pay a total of six. So that's these cards plus these two. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I'm going to go for my thwarting card and just hope for the best here. So remove four threat. Let's go ahead and put that one in and either hope for, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm hoping for at this point. I just need more cards. Ooh, so it's a zero victory player side scheme. When defeated, each player heals a total of five damage from among characters they control. Well, I only control one, but healing five would feel pretty darn good right now. But we're gonna go to angel form and we're gonna see if we can't win right now. I don't know that it's likely, but we're gonna see, because if we don't win, then this threat is gonna be a major issue because I don't really have much of a way to get rid of it. Do I put Cannonball in? I mean, that's only two extra damage. You know what, we're, we're doing what my original thought was. So we're gonna pay one, two, plus this three to do Razor Dive. Six damage to an enemy. If you're an Archangel, gains overkill and piercing. So that's three here and one, two, three here. Then we're gonna pay a double resource and cannonball to do adaptive plumage. Oh, I almost forgot. After you play an aerial event, deal damage equal to its cost. So one, two, three, more. So 18 already down to 12. We're gonna do 
adaptive plumage. Unfortunately, this ability is only once per turn. We are going to do four more damage and we are going to stun the villain. Do I do taunt? I mean, that's my only chance here, right? Let's go ahead and do taunt. Why not? So taunt, the villain attacks you. Other characters cannot defend it, this attack. Draw three cards. Why not? So I'm going to pay one for taunt. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. Villain is stunned, so I do just get to draw three cards. And aerial agility. So it's a defense when an enemy attacks. If you are angel, ignore it. So I get tough and retaliate. Adaptive plumage. I unfortunately am one short of paying for this. Now I do have two aerial agilities, which will let me survive the next attack because I get tough and retaliate. The problem is that I don't have enough. I, I can't stop the threat. I, I mean, the threat was always going to be an issue here. So I'm going to attack for two more damage. That gets Goblin down to six, but now I'm in a pickle because I can't change form and I don't have enough to pay. If I had enough to pay for this adaptive plumage, that'd be four more. It still wouldn't be enough because, again, we were going to get this acceleration. There was not really much I could do there at the end. I, I took Goblin down to turn too soon. That was a terrible mistake, plus drawing a lot of stuff. I will ready up and draw up. I will keep one of these aerial agilities, but, I mean, I don't think there's anything I'll be able to draw that's going to help me here. Natural Flight, there's Remove Threat. Taunting would let me draw cards. Metamorphosis would let me change form and do stuff, which would have been great two seconds ago because uh, then I could have changed form and done some thwarting to maybe get rid of some stuff here. Yeah, there were just too many goblins in play at that point and all the extra acceleration. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I killed him one turn too early. We got Contaminant Strategy attached to a non-permanent side scheme, max one per side scheme. After your hero defends against an attack, remove one threat from the attached side scheme. Well, I guess I could have put it here, but for one cost, there's probably an easier way to thwart that off. Taunt we've seen, and let's see what our last card is, because the first thing that happens is we're going to add X, which is one, two, three, plus these two is five, plus I'm on Archangel, which is six. So we're getting this up to 15, and boom, 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 I lost. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but let's go ahead and draw up and see. We would add a razor dive. That razor dive would have been nice at the end there if I that that six damage was the last six I needed. Unfortunately, didn't quite happen. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Now let's get to our final thoughts. Final thoughts on Angel. I really like him. I know you saw a loss there, but I think a lot of things went wrong back to back to back in order to get to that loss. I know I was low on health and there was a lot of stuff going on with the main scheme, so it didn't work out well. I think that was a player mistake, not a hero mistake. I really enjoyed, I like these heroes that have three forms. I'm glad they went back to it. Ant-Man and Wasp were super fun. He plays a little similar, more similar to Ant-Man than he does to Wasp because you really do have that Archangel side, which is all about dealing damage, doing as much damage as possible. And then you have your thwarting side as well, which also lets you draw cards. I do like that in both forms, you get to draw up to a hand size of five, which is nice. 12 life is nice. So there's a lot of good things going on here. But as you can see, you can't get out of every situation. I also love all the new aspect cards, not only that come in his pre-constructed deck, but that come extra as well. There's a lot of new flight cards. It really like expands that keyword quite a bit and makes flight much more viable than it was before. I think it was always good, but now it's even better. And you've got a hero that comes in with flight right from the beginning as well. So experimenting with Angel with each aspect and all of their flight cards and what they can do is a pretty interesting thought as well. Because most heroes, you have to like draw a card and play a card to get that flight ability. Whereas Angel gets it right from the beginning of the game. I do think Angel is a super fun hero. I do think he is very strong. And I don't know that this was the best example of how good he is. I knew I should not have defeated Goblin on that turn. I knew I was setting myself up for something bad. But just the amount of bad stuff that came out of it was a lot on one turn to deal with. But you know what? That's the way it goes sometimes. As far as Angel goes, though, super fun hero. Really enjoying. I think I like Psylocke more. But... I like both of them quite a bit. You know, it was funny. I wasn't necessarily excited about X-Force. I don't know much about them and certainly not Psylocke and uh, Angel because they're not really featured prominently in many of the movies. And that's how I get all my Marvel knowledge is through the Marvel movies. But I really enjoyed Angel. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed him. I was not looking forward to playing him, but I really liked the aerial aspect and what they put out. And again, once you get those techno wings out, 
wow, it, it really starts to sing. So I played four or five games with them so far. I think this is the first one I've lost. So yay, you got to see that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this play and we will see you soon. Bye.